Hale Bora Mashat Hale Bradost. Sena Le Maruna Sele Marano Shatali Bradost. Hane Maru Paya da Sele Maramako Kore Mashanda. Eze Bragado Shatali Barina Satari Bashanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Father. Kira Baba Shata Kalibra do Shata. Mende Sopra de Kiliba San de Rebo Shatali Brava Baye de Lebosha. Kabra Baba Ye. Kabra Baba Ye. Kilebro Bobo Shota Kalibra Baye. Mambro Godo Salita Pro Salata Pranda Liga Bo Shata. E kada bara baba bashata yate de brogo dosta. Membro gozusta lega bara bashenda yete lebro do bodo sata. E kando sapranda libitara bashata ya. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you for your for your love in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your favor and your mercy. I welcome you all. Let's pray in the spirit for a few more minutes. Let's pray in the spirit for a few more minutes. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. We bless your name. We thank you. Mashete Kali Brodo Shata. Thank you for you sent your word and your word healed us, changed us, directed us, gave us the new direction to go. Thank you for your word that is fresh in our midst every day. Maloko Sotariba Shataya. Thank you for calling us to a feast of your word. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God, because you have a word for everyone that is tuning in today. Lord, we are so grateful. Is somebody grateful? Makoraba Shataya. Say, Lord, speak, I'm ready speak i'm ready i'm ready to receive from you i'm ready to hear from you i'm ready to receive from you i'm ready to hear from you father in the name of jesus thank you spirit of the living god speak to every one of us speak to each one of us tonight say send me a word lord send me a word from above send me a word from from above in the name of Jesus he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them father we thank you because as we receive your word we are being delivered we are being changed our lives are being transformed thank you father thank you father thank you for your word Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. We are so ready to hear from you tonight. Our hearts are receptive tonight. We come against every form of distraction. We come against all forms of distractions. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pull down everything that exalts itself against you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that exalts itself above the word we pull it down strongholds of the mind we pull it down in the name of jesus every stronghold of the mind we pull it down in the name of jesus jesus gave a parable he said some seed the sewer the sower went and he sowed seeds and some fell by the wayside another fell on stony ground he says some fell among tongues but there were some words there were some seeds that fell on good ground say father the words you will speak to me tonight will fall on good ground my heart is a good ground my mind is a good ground in the name of jesus the enemy will not steal your word from my mind the enemy will not steal your word from my heart in the mighty name of jesus he said it happened that as he sowed some fell by the wayside and the birds of the air devourers they came and they devoured it he said it happened again that as he sowed some fell on stony ground where he did not have much earth or much depth and because he sprang up it had no depth in it the bible says the sun came and he scorched it 
hallelujah the sun will not scorch the word in your mind tonight in the mighty name of jesus you will gain roots downward you will take roots downward tonight the words that are going to be going forth tonight father it will be sown on good grounds it will be sown on good grounds jesus in the, in the bible the bible says jesus could not perform so many miracles why because the word that was preached did not was not mixed with faith they did not believe him father we re- we have faith and we receive your word we mix your word with faith tonight in the mighty name of jesus thank you spirit of the living god let your word sink deep into my mind let your word take root into my heart in the name of jesus i command the channels of my spirit to open up i command the channels of my spirit to open up in the mighty name of jesus I receive your word tonight. I receive your word tonight. Mande soto rabasheta ya dile bosata. Thank you, my father. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Your word will not fall on stony ground tonight. Father, we bless your holy name. We give you glory, honor, and praise. For in Jesus' mighty, precious, beautiful name, we have prayed. Amen 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 and amen god bless you all for tuning in tonight i want to talk about activating a major shift in your life how to activate a major shift in your life um you know the the kind of christianity we ought to practice it's not the christianity that leaves everything to god It's not the type of Christianity or spirituality that is totally irresponsible. It's not the kind of spirituality that has nothing to do with you. Whatever, when God sends a word, when God gives a charge, he gives, he gives it in advance, but he still expects us. There are still some terms and conditions that we must fulfill to partner with God to see that that word that was declared over us comes to pass. The Lord has said the next three days, we should wait on him in the place of prayer, fasting, and in the place of the word in order to actualize or to walk in the reality of what he has said, which is a major shift, right? So there are some things that we must know to do. There are some things that we must be deliberate about in bringing about a major shift into our lives. We must ask God, what is my own role in this? What is my own role in this? What do I have to do? When God sends the word to you, there's always something. You either have a position to take, you either have some things to do, you either have, there must be a role that you must play. When Jesus spoke to Lazarus, even the, despite the fact that Lazarus was a dead man, Jesus still said, Lazarus, come out. It was up to Lazarus to rise up. He, didn't, he, didn't, he, 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 he still spoke to a dead man. That man still had something to do. He had a role to play. It was up to Lazarus to hear that word and get up. If Lazarus only heard that word and was arguing with Jesus, but I'm a dead man. How can I get up? But I'm dead. How can I? Because your spirit never dies. So his spirit heard that word and his spirit had faith in him to be, to, to, to act on the word that Jesus spoke over him. Amen. So when God declares a word, you always have something. You always have a role to play in it. If God has called you, um, um if god has called you um let's say he says i've called you a teacher to the nations you have a role to play you are not just going to stand there and be declaring that i have been called a teacher to the nations i've been called a teacher to the nations uh, the lord has said this the lord has said that you must assume the position of a student because for you to learn for you to be able to teach you must be able to learn only a learner can be a teacher hey holy spirit is just downloading some things tonight only a learner can be a teacher you are not an expert at anything until you have gained mastery of it until you have gained mastery of that thing 
of that field, of that subject or whatever it is that God has called you to do. So if God says, I've made you a teacher of the word or a teacher to children or a teacher to nations and all of that and all of that, you must ask him, what is my role to play? Wisdom should tell you that there are things that you ought to do. You ought to enroll yourself in a school. You've got to be educated. You have to be enlightened. Amen. You have to be enlightened. You have to, you, you have to be receiving revelation at all times. Praise the Lord. You have to be re receiving revelation. Your, your mind must be in tune with the word of God. If what you're going to be teaching is the word of God anyways. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So there's always a role to play. You always have something to do. God said to me, um, this year, I'm going to, you're going to have to allocate a certain um, number of minutes to the word. I don't want to call hours. I don't want to, I'm just going to use that word number of minutes to, to, to paying attention to the word of God, sitting with the word of God, whether you like it or not. Why? Because you're going to be teaching and he doesn't want us to be, um, to, to start saying, I have a message or I have, I have, I have to preach tomorrow. What do I say? What he wants you to be so rich in the word that you preach from your overflow. Hallelujah. You preach from your, you minister from your overflow. I have not even touched my sermon <laughs> and everything I'm saying is off book is off the record i've not even started i've not even started what i wanted to say tonight that is what that is what it means to minister to be so rich in the word of god to be so rich in the word of god that at every point in time you have bread to give Kaba yashanta at every point in time you have bread to give you have a word to minister praise the lord Praise the Lord. So be so rich in that field that God has called you to. Be so, so, so literate in it. Be so, put your, put your whole heart into it. It can be, it doesn't have to be in ministry. It doesn't have to relate to ministry. But I would use ministry because that is one of the things that God, you know, has placed as my number one, um, um, what, you know. That's what I do. That's my calling. So I might be using ministry as an example, but it should apply to you in various areas of your life. Use it, apply the same wisdom into your business. Or do you, Imagine a man, Jesus said, which of you would want to build a house and will not sit down to count the cost first? Sometimes counting the cost to build might, might, might mean sitting down to learn sitting down to gain knowledge gain mastery of what god has called you to build amen sitting down and learning sitting down i have a gift for writing i can write a book in one week if i sit down and i give it my full attention without I, in fact without going through any other book but the bible it's a gift of God that I know that I have. Most of the books that I post online, the ebooks I post online, they are books I'm meant to sit down and finish up. Most times I compose them after prayers. It might just be one verse of the Bible that I read and boom, revelation came and I just started writing. And I use my Canva app to create a, a, a book cover and I post it and the Holy Spirit will be telling me, go back and finish that book. Because you're not done yet. I'll just take a part of it and share with the world and read the feedbacks. And okay, I'll say, okay, all right, let me build on this. You must be a student of the word. But be a student, not more than that. Be a student of whatever prophecy, whatever word has gone ahead of you. Whatever it is that God has placed in your hands. Make sure that you master it. Make sure that you master it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
now let's get to the sermon <laughs> glory to god let's get to tonight's sermon let's get to tonight's sermon activating a major shift in your life by prophetic declarations that's my sermon for tonight i hope i'm not boring you guys yet activating a major shift in your life by prophetic declarations glory to god i'm going to be reading from i'm using the message translation james chapter 3 from verse 5 james chapter 3 from verse 5 it says a bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse a small ruder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled mark that word skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds a word out of your mouth may seem of no account hallelujah but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it it only takes a spark remember to set off a forest fire a careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that by your speech we can ruin the world turn harmony to chaos throw mud on a reputation send the whole world up in smoke and go up in smoke with it smoke right up from the pit of hell this is scary the seven to ten you can tame a tiger but you can't tame a tongue it's never been done the tongue runs wild a wanton killer with our tongues we bless god our father with the same tongues we curse the very men and women he made in his image curses and blessings out of the same mouth what was this the subject what's the title for my sermon tonight activating a major shift by prophetic declarations the Bible says that we can control a whole horse by controlling its mouth. Even a huge sheep is controlled with a small ruder in the hands of a skilled captain. For the first time, the word skilled captain actually caught my attention. I was speaking to someone some days ago and I said, it's not enough to be anointed you've got to be skilled you've got to be skillful with the anointing that god has placed in your hands a lot of us have to be skillful with our words the bible said a small ruder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain what does that mean a an unskilled captain can actually be in control of a huge ship and drive it anyhow drive into the storm run into the storm race into mountains dive where they are not meant to dive into why because they are unskilled in their craft you and i must be skillful with our words if you want to activate a major shift in your life don't just think after prayers or it's only during prayers that you say what you want even after prayers make sure that the words that come out of your mouth is in alignment with the prayers that you have uttered make sure that the words that come out of your mouth is in alignment with the word of god that is what it means to be skillful with your tongue to be skillful with your words to be skillful with the words of your mouth why because the bible says by your speech you can ruin the world you can turn harmony to chaos you can throw mud on someone's reputation you can set the world whole world up in smoke and even go up in smoke with it by your words by your words proverbs 18 verse 20 says a man's burly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth if you participate in ignite prayers you remember I always say you will eat the fruit of your prayers hello 
you will eat the fruit of your words also the bible says and with the increase of his lips he shall be filled some of you you are so filled with what you have said your world is filled with the words that you have spoken your life is taking the direction of the words that you have spoken if you look at your life and you're not pleased with what it looks like you are not saying what you want to see it is due to what you have been saying god did not lie when he said this is our year of grace god did not lie you know every time december we always hear um there's this meme that goes on social media that says um 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 pastor another year has come oh, and then i'm not yet married i've not yet had the car and all of that it's not the pastor's fault no it's not it's not the pastor's fault you have a role to play to partner with every prophetic word that comes out of the mouth of god there's no room for lazy christianity anymore you've got to be skillful with the word skillful with the words of your mouth skillful with the things that come up so if you look at your life look at your life today just close your eyes and picture your life today you are exactly where the words of your mouth has directed you to you are filled with the words of your mouth the content of your destiny is the content of the words that have been coming out of your mouth if you have been blessing yourself then you will see blessings in your life you will be filled with the blessings of god if you are the type that likes to curse yourself you will be filled with curses why because the scriptures cannot be broken the bible says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled so god has commanded a major shift to your way and after 5 a.m prayers you get to shop and something happens maybe you don't make sale for the first three hours and then you just start talking start murmuring start complaining start saying things that you're not meant to say you are countering all your prayers you don't say what you are saying let's go to genesis chapter one genesis chapter one you are not meant to say what the situation looks like in the beginning god created heaven and the earth right verse 2 says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and god said let there be light and there was what light god did not tell us he did not use his mouth to further describe how bad the earth was looking he did not use his mouth to describe oh the earth is so formless so shapeless full of darkness where do i start from where do i start from he said what he wanted to see he said what he wanted to see what do you want to see in your life make sure that is what is coming out of your mouth i have some targets that i've set down for myself for my business my ministry and all the things that god has committed into my hands and i find myself because i'm conscious this year i'm i'm so deliberate about my life this year i am so 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 deliberate about obeying god about following god so help me god by the grace of god by the grace of god every time i think about my targets maybe in the morning i think of what i'm supposed to achieve today or what i'm expecting to come into my business today instead of saying hey no one has called no others this has not happened what do i say i call it forth i call it forth i call it forth i say what i want to see so it, it's not enough to pray by five it's not enough to pray by five six or whatever it's not enough to join all the prayer groups you must tame your tongue you must what you must tame your tongue because your tongue will set your life in the course in the direction to which you are telling it to go to you determine where your life heads 
by the words of your mouth. And you see what God did. He showed us the way in the beginning. How to create our own world. He showed us how he created the world. And then he breathed into us the breath of life. So we have his DNA. Amen. We have his DNA. If I, I illustrated this for my children during our money devotion. I said, if I'm a witch, for instance, which I am not. But if I am a witch and I give birth to a baby. When I carry that baby, maybe for instance, the baby is not alive. I carry that baby and I breathe into that baby. That baby is automatically a witch. Why? Because I gave that baby my DNA. I gave that baby my breath. I gave that baby my life. Just by breathing life into that baby. And so I was telling them that the same reason, the reason you can make declarations and it will come to pass is not because you said it is because you carry the dna of god the breath of god is in you the dna of god is in you you can do what god did in the beginning you can create your own world why because he breathed into you you carry his breath halabashataya he said, let us create man after our own likeness and in my own image. So that they can do what I can do. So that they can do on earth what I do in heaven. Amen. You carry God's DNA. You carry God's DNA so you can create your world. How did God create the whole world? Through words spoken words making declarations that was how he created the world hallelujah that was how he created the world and so you and i can also do the same thing you and i can do the same thing because we carry his dna in us glory to god glory to god we carry god's dna we have his ability. We have the same ability that God had. Would you begin to create your world? Would you begin to chart the course of the course of the direction of your life? To, to, to chart the direction of your destiny. To direct your destiny in the way you want it to go. Through the words that come out of your mouth. Make bold declarations make bold declarations be confident be confident when you are speaking be confident when you are speaking this is the confidence you should have what is that confidence that in the beginning when god created me he breathed into my nostrils he gave me his dna i'm after his likeness he gave me the creative ability that is in him and so the same way he created the world in the beginning, I too can create my world through the words of my mouth. Amen. Mark eleven twenty two says, have faith in God. 23 says, for assuredly I say to you, whosoever says, whosoever says, what are you saying? Ha. Whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be thou cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart you see what kills your prophetic declarations you are saying it but you are doubting in your heart that is the that is where the declarations that's 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 what renders renders it ineffective so you might be saying but i've been declaring but i've been confessing but i've been speaking it is there doubt in your heart is there doubt in your heart because the equation is that even your heart must be in alignment with what you're saying that's the complete equation you don't say things from your head and your heart is not in agreement and you want to see it come to pass possible it's impossible jesus said whosoever says to this mountain 
be removed and be gone into the sea. He didn't end it there. He didn't say that he will have what he says. He said, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes higher by Shataya. Oh my goodness. But believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. He will have whatsoever he says. There must be faith in your heart. How do you receive faith into your heart? Be pregnant with the word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hearing not just the written word, but pay attention to the spoken word of God, even in the mouth of his servants. That's, I'm the one paraphrasing now. I'm adding it. I'm adding, I'm buttressing that scripture. Because as you are listening to me, faith is also coming, it's being imparted into you. So it's not, you, you don't just receive faith by hearing the read, by reading the word of God in your Bible. You also receive faith by hearing it spoken to you. By listening to it. By listening to seasoned teachers, faith will jump into you. Faith will rise in you. Your faith will increase. It will go from grace to grace, from one glory, one level of glory to another. It will keep increasing. Amen. It will keep increasing. Some of you, you are filled with words, but you are not filled with faith. Mm, who am I talking to? You are so filled with the word of God, but you are not filled with faith in God. Put first things first. Impregnate yourself with the word. Let faith rise up within you. Be so rich in the word that you are so rich in faith. To be rich in the word is to be rich in faith. To be filled with the word is to be filled with faith. Amen. For instance, you are believing God for a baby. How does that apply to you? How does all these things I'm saying, how does it apply to you? Go and read stories about women that were barren. Go and read stories about Hannah. Go and read stories about Rebecca. Go and read stories about Sarah. Read it until the spirit of faith envelopes you. Read it until you are so filled. In fact, read it until you can say that, you can, you can repeat that story word for word without opening your Bible. That's how to be filled with faith. You are believing God for a miracle in the area of your finances. Go to the word. Look at when one person was stranded and God came through for the person. Trace when, um, read the story of um, the prophet who's, who died and left his family in debt. How God came through for them. Read the story of the wedding in Cana. When the couples were about to be embarrassed, they ran out of wine. How Jesus performed the miracle. Read stories. The Bible is so complete. Find a story. Find a story that, 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 you, that, that, that you, can, you can relate to. You are sick in your body. You've not found any cure or there's no cure. The doctor has said this. The doctor has said that. You have been popping in pills. You have been going. Go and find the story of a sick person in the Bible. Read it. Digest it. Keep going over it. Let that be the only thing you put in your face. And say, God, if you can do this for this guy. If you can heal a leprous man. Hey, you, will, you can heal me. My case is not even up to this man's case. And God healed him. Haba. Find stories that relate to your situation. And if you can't find any in the Bible, listen to sermons. You know why I love listening to sermons a lot? Because it's in those sermons that I hear stories of men. I hear personal stories from men. How they did this, how they did that. Sometimes I can be talking about Bishop Oyedepo. You would think he told me the story by himself. I heard it while he was preaching. And I caught faith. I just caught the spirit of faith. 
Sometimes I may be talking about somebody's situation. Maybe a preacher that was in, that needed God to come through concerning their ministry or something. And just that story that the person narrated in their sermon. Ha! It will just charge me up. And the spirit of faith will just envelop me. And faith will rise in my heart. And then with that faith in my heart, I begin to make bold declarations. That's why sometimes, most times, I always have to pray before I show up for prayers. By five. Most times, I always have to study before I show up for prayers by five. Because when I'm studying, I give the Holy Spirit something to work with. Scriptures will just come up. Scriptures will just come up in my spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be telling me something. And it will remind me of a scripture, of a story that I read. And most times, I'll bring up that story while I'm praying. I'll just say, remember this. Remember what happened in the Bible. Remember this. Remember that. I'm relating human real situations, now situations, to past situations. So that the spirit of faith can jump into you. Bible stories were not written to entertain you. They were written to help your faith. Let me say that again. Bible stories, historical Bible stories, were not documented just to entertain you. They were documented to help your faith in times of need. They were documented to help your faith in times of need. Because one day you will need my story. One day you will need Jacob's story. One day you will need Abraham's story. One day you will need John's story. One day you will need the story of Jesus. You will find yourself in a situation, but it's not new. Somebody somewhere has been there before and is just coming out of it or has come out of it, has overcome that situation. How did the person come out of it? Listen to them. And then be inspired by it. That inspiration will bring faith. That inspiration, through that inspiration, the Holy Spirit will tell you things to do. Once you are inspired by somebody else's story, you begin to receive inspirational instructions. Hallelujah. Bible stories were written down for you and I to go back to in the times of our own downtimes. In the times where we are in trouble. When we are at a Red Sea situation. When we are at crossroads. Amen. Why do you think that God told the Israelites? Listen, in, the, in, in Joshua chapter 3, 4. I think chapter 3 or 4. When they were about to cross the Jordan. God told them to take stones from that place. He said, take stones from the place. Take stones from that river. Keep these stones. Tell your children how I delivered you from the hands of your enemies. Let these stones be as a memorial to your children's children. He will tell them, tell your children how I did it. So that they will remember in their own times of need. So that they won't forget me so soon. That was why Gideon was asking that angel. When the angel appeared to Gideon in the Bible and said, Thou art, thou art a man of valor. He said, where is the God that we heard of? That delivered our fathers and our mothers from the chariots of the Egyptians. Where is the God that parted the Red Sea? What about the stories we heard? There was faith in the heart of Gideon. Because he heard stories from the, from, from the past. He had stories. He had stories. Amen. You need Bible stories in your life. I love Bible stories a lot. You need Bible stories in your life. They will help your faith. So once this is in place, one fa the Bible says they did not, Jesus could do no miracles. Why? Because the word was preached, but it wasn't mixed with faith. That is what, was, that is what ha happened to the one that sowed on grounds stony ground there was no earth no depth no depth no soil it couldn't germinate just the seed of the word must meet faith in your heart be mixed up that's this fertilizer faith is the fertilizer for the word hey faith is the fertilizer for the word in your heart 
when faith when the word of god is mixed with faith it has fertilizer to grow and become whatever you say it should become so the word of god will reproduce in your life whatever you tell it to reproduce if it jams fertilizer in your heart faith is the fertilizer amen so jesus said whoever says to a mountain and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things which he says will be done listen sometimes your head will be telling you you have to be able to separate what your head is telling you from what your heart is telling you you have to be able to separate it i'm telling you the truth sometimes i want to make a de declaration there's something i'm believing god for and every morning i call it forth. in fact sometimes i call it forth like 10 times a day and i'm not even joking i call it forth. i say it like 10 times i have it i have this i call for this i call for this day i say it as much as 10 times a day and when i'm saying it with my heart i believe it with my heart but you know my head can be telling me this this thing is a great thing you are believing for <laughs> if you have half of it better be grateful i know you are believing for this but what if you have half i'll say ah <laughs> no i want it all i have it complete i have it in full i keep repeating it i don't settle for what my head is telling me some of you settle you decide to change your mind you think it's god that is telling you to reduce your expectation calm down ah no god will never tell you to reduce your expectation it is the devil that will tell you to reduce your expectation the bible says with god all things are possible glory to god all things are possible everything that you can imagine is possible don't agree with what your head is saying don't ever agree with what your head is saying don't agree with what your flesh is saying the bible says the flesh profits nothing nothing good can come out of your flesh the flesh will always struggle with the spirit and then don't agree with what the devil is whispering into your ears you have a mind of your own your head can be lying to you but don't let your heart lie to you make sure there's faith in your heart faith does not work in the head faith works in the heart not in the head so separate what your head is saying from your heart believe what is coming out from your heart I read a scripture today that struck me the bible says and jesus perceived with his heart i said hmm, okay you perceive with your heart i would have thought you perceive with your mind the heart and the mind i believe they are two different things that's another topic for another day i'm not even ready to go into that but the bible says jesus perceived with his heart and i stood with it i said hey, you perceive with your heart that means your heart must be so sharp your heart must be so tender to be catching things from the spirit realm so you believe with your heart even when you are making confessions of salvation he didn't say you believe with your head he says you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and you will be saved the heart and the mouth must be in alignment forget about the head whatever is coming out of your head it's all right just make sure your heart and your mouth is in alignment just make sure there's faith in your heart just make sure that fertilizer is there to pregnate the word to fertilize to fertilize the word so that it can reproduce it can reproduce hallelujah and what did jesus say finally therefore i say to you whatsoever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them he also said he shall have whatsoever he says he talked about saying and he talked about praying the first the previous verse says you shall have whatsoever you say he didn't say whosoever prays to this mountain he said whoever says to this mountain praying and saying are two different things prophetic declarations prophetic confessions saying words saying the words of god inspired words of god is different from praying jesus said you will have whatsoever you say he also said you should have whatever when you are praying whatever you believe you will have it amen so the words that come out of your mouth will reproduce itself in your life 
it will reproduce itself in your life. Regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of what's going on in your head, I tell you, your head will lie to you. Your head will always lie to you. Just make sure your heart... That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it. Where is that scripture? Out of it comes the issues of this life. Guard your heart. Protect what enters your heart. Protect your heart. Guard it. Keep it safe. Don't let anything enter. Put a gate there. See if what comes in and what goes out. Because that is where the world will find fertilizer. If you let what comes to your head digest into your heart, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Let what is in your head be bounced off. Retain the word of God in your heart. Sometimes you are looking at a tough situation. It looks almost impossible, but there's so much faith in your heart. You say, God, you can do this. Ah, I believe you. I believe God can. This is a light thing for God. This is a small thing for God. This is not a big deal for God. The same God that created the whole world in seven, six days. Ah, uh-uh. What is my own matter that he cannot solve for me? What is my matter that is what he can't solve for me? How big is my situation? That he cannot take care of it. Hallelujah. Guard the words of your mouth. God, the Bible says you cannot tame a tongue. You can tame your tongue. You must tame your tongue. I said the tongue can be so wild, so hard to tame. It takes being what? Skillful. Remember what the Bible said in message translation that we read. You must be skillful. You don't just be anointed. Be skillful with the anointing. Be skillful with your words. A careless, James 3 verse 5. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can spark, set off a forest on fire. Have you seen when husbands and wife, husband and wife, they are fighting? And the wife will just throw one word. Hey, the house will be on fire. One word. Just with one word, the whole house will be on fire. That's how powerful your words can be. You get married by saying, I do. You get divorced by saying, I no do again. Isn't it? That's how powerful your words can be. How did you get saved? By saying it. I received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Bam, a covenant was established. How did you get married? By saying, I do. Bam, a covenant was established. That's to let you know how powerful your words are. If the words that you spoke on your wedding day is what is keeping you in that house till now, 20 years. Just because you told a man that I do. That's all you said, I do. And you're still in that marriage 20 years now. 15 years now. Because you said something. Imagine where your life will be when you start saying the right things. When you start saying I do to God. When you start saying yes to the word of God. When you start agreeing with what God says you are. With who God says you are. Just imagine that. Just imagine that. Be skillful with the words of your mouth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe you're being blessed tonight. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Lift your hands towards heaven. Say, Father, I receive grace. Help me to tame my tongue. Help me to be skillful with the words of my mouth. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. So that I will not undo what you are doing in my life with the words of my mouth. If there's anything that I've said wrongly about my life, wrongly about my destiny, if I've said any negative word that is affecting me today, Father, I reverse it with my words. I reverse it with my words. I reverse every negative word I have spoken over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
I reverse every evil word I have spoken over my destiny, over my children, over my marriage, over my husband. I reverse it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your word stand in my life. Let your word take preeminence over my life. Let your word be the final say in my life, Lord. Let the words of God have the final say in my life. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining the word feast tonight. God bless you. I'm sure you had a wonderful time. I came here by faith. What do I mean by that? <laughs> you know, you have no idea how busy my life can be at times. And I've just been asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say tonight? What do you want me to say tonight? I didn't even put down so much. I just, you know, just little notes here and there. I showed up by faith, <laughs> believing that God will not let me down in my time of need. And he did not let me down. I hope you've been blessed. I believe strongly that you've been blessed. I believe strongly that you've been blessed because I have been blessed myself. The Holy Spirit really spoke to us. He spoke to me. He spoke to you. He spoke to me and he spoke to you. Well, um, the word feast is for three days. We'll have another session tomorrow evening. And um, I hope to see you there. We'll be live by 5 a.m. tomorrow again. Praying, saying words, making prophetic declarations. And I believe strongly that you will be blessed. Invite your friends and your loved ones and have a wonderful night rest. Goodbye for now.